Tonight, in response to the United States putting Chinese telecom and software companies on notice, the Chinese are launching a full-scale information war against the United States of America and their newest target, me. Yeah, me. Because I have dared to say we should engage in economic warfare with the financial tools we have. And, you know, maybe they didn't like the fact that Steve Bannon, the man whom they have accused of being the true enemy of America, on this program? I think this is the first time, uh, I think in living memory, they've ever gone after a private citizen. It shows you how nervous they are. They must be really, really nervous because tonight they're hitting me. Now, interestingly, the Chinese state media, they say Bannon is an enemy while they accuse me of uh, just not knowing my research, which China, I do. She's so sure of U.S. victimhood, so indignant that her eyes practically spit fire. Yet, in carefully analyzing her words, it's all emotion and accusation supported with a little substance. Hmm. Okay, for the record, any emotion you see is quite real. It's quite real and it comes from substance. But hey, I guess to the Chinese state-run media, I get it. I'm just a girl, right? I'm just an American girl. So I clearly couldn't know what I'm talking about, right? Of course, I must be all emotion and no substance. Okay, China, here's a little insight into how we American women think. We're damn smart, and we will willingly respond with emotion when presented with a set of facts like this. And let's go through them. China's economic ascent. Look at that GDP chart. Look at it. It's amazing. It's incredible. Uh, just look at the last 20 years there. China's aspirations, let's face it, they're not good for us. They're not good for our families. China wants to take our economic place in the world, and in doing so, will devastate our economy at the expense of our future and our families' futures. Meanwhile, if they're not calling me emotional, <laughs> they're trying to scare people with the power they perceive me to have. Watch. Her economic warmongering reaches millions of Americans in their homes and possibly many others around the world. And given the close, almost symbiotic relationship that the Fox Channel has with the current U.S. administration, it's fair to say she also speaks for Trump's America. Hey, quick side note, right? Is it like we're watching an avatar or something there, right? That anchor is reading a script that seems, uh, I guess, to have no emotion because she doesn't seem to read it as though she's had any hand in writing it, state media. Anyway, I digress. The accusation is that I speak for Trump's America. Sometimes, sometimes not. I I'm not here to tout anyone's view but my own. I can only articulate what I personally believe is right for our country and the present situation vis-a-vis -vis China, not right. For our country, and it cannot continue unless we're okay with them turning us into uh, France while they become the United States. <laughs> I don't think any of us would like that, but listen, here's a message for them. China, if you're fair with us, I suspect we will be fair with you. But don't think for two seconds that this nonsense of you taxing our goods while we allow yours to come into this country duty free. Don't think that's going to continue. Mm -mm. Beyond claiming that China continues to prosper at our expense, Reagan blamed three times the Chinese for stealing billions from the Americans. According to her, we don't really have a choice but to wage this war. For the record, I didn't say war. I said economic war. And we're in one. And we're winning it. Of course, we will and we should and we will fight to make world markets more fair, fair for us. We deserve it. And yeah, the Chinese are stealing from us. They're stealing intellectual property. You know, they're stealing as much as $600 billion a year. That is a fact, and that is a lot of money. But worse than the annual effect, I'll tell you, is the long-term one. If we keep allowing them to poach what we have created, when does it stop? Right? Does it stop when the tables are reversed, when they've taken everything we have? China, listen up. You've picked the wrong fight here. 
Play fair, trade fair, or don't trade at all. Joining me right now, Baltic Capital Markets economist Catherine Rooney-Vera and senior fellow and director for Chinese strategy at the Hudson Institute and author of the 100 the hundred year marathon, Michael Pillsbury. It's good to see you both. Um, Michael, I'm going to get to you in just a second, but Catherine, what you, you know, like they're going after me and, and saying I, I'm just emotional, no substance. Is a woman not allowed to have a point of view in China? <laughs> Well, Trish, it's clear you're really getting to them. And let's face it, what the Chinese most fear, Trish, is re-election of, of Donald Trump in 2020. And if they indeed think, as you are speaking truth to the masses and carrying the sway that you may have with the American voting populace, that's a real concern to the Chinese. What they least want is to deal with Trump, too. I mean, I have long thought, Trish, that in this negotiating round, what they're trying to do is drag their feet to get through to, and crossing their fingers, a Biden presidency so mm -hmm. that they can renege on promises as they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Right, because they get that big, long plan. It, you know, we have a couple years that we can look forward out to, uh, maybe six right. years, Michael. So knowing that, that they're playing mm -hmm. the long game, and yeah, I think they're rattled. I think mm -hmm. Catherine's right. I, I think why else are they suddenly attacking me? Um, mm -hmm. They're rattled, but they, they, they kind of want anybody but Trump in the Oval Office right now, don't mm -hmm. they, Michael? Uh, yes, I think that's right. They're counting on Biden. They also believe if Hillary had won, this whole thing would never happen with challenging China on its practices. Well, they're probably but right think, on that, right? Uh, probably never would have happened. <laughs> Part of what right. they're doing also, uh, Trish, I think you know this. You mentioned it's state-run media. This is Chinese Communist Party-controlled television. It's in English, so it's going worldwide. You're already a superstar globally anyway, but now they're adding to your glistening powers with a very detailed attack. You notice how they were, besides saying you're emotional and that your eye, uh, they're My sort of flattering about your eyes, but they're also <laughs> going into detail. I take it as a compliment, by the way. De they're <laughs> denying that they engage in all this theft. Yeah. And the president has put out three long reports with great detail that you, you, you've mentioned in the past. Mm -hmm. So you got the facts on your side, as well as they're flattering you globally. <laughs> but, yeah, let's talk about those facts. I mean, I mentioned GDP. We've mm -hmm. mentioned that yes. they steal, uh, by some accounts, up to $600 billion a year in intellectual property. I mean, if they're not outright stealing it, Michael, they are forcing companies to turn it over. And I think it's unfortunate that so many U.S. companies are so short-sighted and so bottom-line oriented that they're willing to do so at the expense of what it means for their company and for the country 10 years down the road. But if we continue down that path, if we were to just say, okay, sure, Huawei, you know, we're, we're, we're open for business. Um, any Chinese surveillance or telecom company that wants to come in, software, et cetera, do we run a risk of really losing um, some, some things that we hold very dear for security reasons, sir? Well, we do. I think that's the point of the president's executive order uh, last week on May 15th, where he didn't mention Huawei by name, but he described the number of entities that are engaging in subversion, theft, a various series of misconduct, uh, and that they're going to be punished. And he's declaring an international economic emergency under our law. I can do that just for that particular thing. So when you praise the president, which you've done, that may be your greatest sin in the, in the minds of the Chinese propaganda machinery. You're supporting wow. President Trump's approach. Uh, but he's got so many reports now. I mentioned three. There's actually a total of five. Uh, altogether, a couple thousand footnotes. The Chamber of Commerce just today has announced it's getting worse uh, in Beijing. 20% of our companies now report forcible technology transfer requirements to get a bigger market. So uh, the situation is not getting better. I, I thought we were close to a deal uh, two weeks ago. I think the president did too. But when they reneged, it took back a lot of major concessions. It's really. Uh, opened up the floor now for this kind of name calling back and forth. So yeah, I and, congratulate and, and you. We, well, <laughs> look, I, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a little odd that the state media mm -hmm. would be targeting me. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's quite bizarre, frankly, but I hear you in that they, uh, they're trying to, to push back against uh, anything that might challenge them. Um, Catherine, you know, there, there's another thing going on sort of worldwide here, and I'll just point this out before I let you guys go. I know, Catherine, you've followed Venezuela very closely. We have more of this story coming up later in the show. But the Chinese have also been very active 
down in Venezuela as well. So strategically, um, they have a lot of reasons to not like what this administration has done. Well, absolutely. And China unequivocally wants to be both a geopolitical and economic superpower, and they want to supplant the U.S. in that role. That's something that we've known for many decades. Trish, you and I know that since Bill Clinton, the U.S. has been complaining about IP theft. Let me add one more thing to put some substance to your own argument, is that the U.S. is coming from a very strong position in terms of negotiation power. The U.S. is growing at one percentage point above potential growth rates, We're growing at 3.2 percent versus potential growth of 2.2. Inflation is at 1.5 percent versus a target of 2 percent. Tariffs are not going to completely dismantle this economic recovery. In fact, the impact is minuscule on economic I growth. You. I hear it's you. No, I mean, people were so inflation. worried. They point. were so worried. And you know what? They we're were. doing just yes. fine. We're doing just fine, China. Uh, by the way, you might <laughs> want to worry about your ozone layer over there. We just got reports today True. that China is responsible for uh, some leakage into our ozone. Not good. Anyway, Thank They're going to attack you again, Trish. <laughs> I'm ready. You know it.